What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Dead Ball TV. Uh, Jake and I, we decided to jump on real quick and give our thoughts about the Japan-Costa Rica game, um, which ended in a 1-0 win for Costa Rica. Absolutely embarrassing for Japan. Um, I feel like this has got to be one of the biggest bottle jobs that I can remember in recent World Cup history. Would you agree with that? I mean, you needed a draw against a team that just ate seven. You needed a draw. Should have played for a win, but you just needed a point. Right. And you end up losing the game. Yeah, it is. I, you know, I'm trying to think. I I don't know if there is a uh, more perfect example of bottling than this Japanese team right now. I mean, the sheer arrogance and how they played and how they conducted themselves. I mean, not only do I blame Moriyasu, I blame the players, you know, to an extent. Like, mm -hmm. I could see some effort, but, oh, I mean, it was just a downright bad recipe from the start. And, uh, I mean, you you watch the game and you're like, yeah, Costa Rica is going to score a terrible, terrible goal on these guys. Of course. Of course. You can see the writing on the wall, dude. It was like the you, arrogance, I think, is the perfect word. And I think that was somewhat surprising. I've never seen a team in their second match day at the World Cup play a B team. And I'm talking about like Brazil, Argentina, France, but for Japan to come yeah. out and play, it wasn't quite a B team, but it was. You know, it was the the 1.5 team, five changes to the starting lineup. There were some there were some screamers on there. I mean, Yuki Soma, which I don't know if you know that guy. I mean, I barely know him. Unbelievable. He's a random scrub in the J League. Only has two goals, I think, to his name. Dude, Holy he's shit. literally played. This is his third cap for the national team. And some people are gonna be like, actually, he's got. He's got nine because he played in the goddamn EAFFE1, you know, that random tournament yeah, that you yeah. and I talked about with Albert long ago. That's not real. That's not a real tournament. It's only a domestic tournament. This man has three caps, and you started him in a World Cup game? He didn't even play a qualifier. Yeah. Jake, I can – I literally – I literally am speechless. I just finished watching the game everybody because i i recorded it because it was at 4 a.m so all my emotions are fresh this is this is a sackable offense mid world cup in my opinion gone bring in the interim for the last game bring bring in case gay honda last game just to be the manager i mean this is and he's there he's there in in qatar i've seen a video of him walking around qatar is he yeah he's bring there him bring him in give him the suit this is crazy. You start how many J League guys started this game? Four? It was either four or five. Uh, either way, unacceptable. I think there's only like eight guys total in the Japanese camp for this World yeah. Cup from the J League, and you start half of them. This is crazy. Like I like I said, I have never seen sure, you know, we've seen teams in the past for match day three or whatever, their final group game, and they've already locked up the six points. They're like, whatever, mm -hmm. we'll kind of throw in the subs. But on the second day. This was a mess. On the second day. And you don't have depth like that. This is Japan. Right. Crazy, dude. It And it, it, it's insulting to Costa Rica. Oh, they yeah. did it again, bro. Well, they had to. I, I, I mean, it's like we we had talked about a few days ago. Costa Rica has nothing to lose. They just got walloped. They led in seven, and this was just like a okay. Let's just see what we can do, and that's exactly what happened. It was comical the build up to the goal and his shot. You know, there is I think both Ko and maybe Yoshida made mistakes in the lead up, and then it was it was a pretty piss poor shot. And Gonda, I mean, I don't know, man. He <laughs> he had another mental falter, and uh, yeah, I 
I don't know. It's uh, it's criminal. It is criminal to be a Japanese fan right now. It, it, yeah. And we're not even like Japanese blood. And yeah. And I feel outraged. I can't believe. I'm, I can't I'm even imagine. Right now. I can't even imagine what the people in Tokyo feel right now. Can you imagine if Greg Berhalter just rolls out like the B team against Iran or something? It it would it wouldn't quite be like that because Japan already had the three points in the bag, but you don't you don't advance off three points. That is being so presumptuous. The fan base would riot. We'd storm U.S. Soccer, the office building. We drag everybody out there with you know torches and pitchforks. Mm -hmm. But like. I don't know what the backlash is going to be for Moriyasu here, but this is this is him in a nutshell, isn't it? And I I think I said in our preview when we were doing Group E, I was like, he's got the howler in him though. He's yeah. got that like shocking, shocking squad rotation. I never thought his selection in in terms of like who he's calling up for camps has been bad. I've, yeah, maybe you should have brought in Hatate and uh, Furuhashi. But whatever. For the most part, it's good. But when he plays these games, the, the amount of times this man rolls out a B team is is embarrassing and is inexcusable. He did it against Canada in the last friendly. Um, he's done it before. He did it in World Cup qualifiers. I'm like, dude, y'all have already lost two of your first three games. Right. Why are you playing the scrubs right now? It's like he doesn't. I don't know if he doesn't think that these guys can play back-to-back -back games, so he needs to give them rest. I don't know what it is, but but you left Junya Ito and Mitoma on the bench until the 63rd minute against a team that just sits back in a low block and looks to counter and score off set pieces. Yeah. And you left your two most creative players – and most attacking th uh, threats in terms of take-ons on the bench. It's inexcusable. This, this is, is like, this is shocking. No, I think he's gone. He has to be gone after this World Cup. He has I don't, to be gone. I don't know if the Japan Federation is built like that, where they can uh, sack him with this last game, because, you know, it still is the World Cup group <laughs> stages. A lot of stuff can happen. They could beat Spain because this is a Japanese team that uh, I I feel historically they've always uh, played up to their to their opposition and they played down. You never see this type of rotation, even with teams where you know they got guys from with, who play for Real Madrid on the bench, and you bring in guys from the J League to yeah. play against Costa Rica. How many times do Costa Rica have to upset teams in the World Cup before y'all take them seriously? How many times do they have to do this? They like, if there was it. any CONCACAF team to not do this against, it was Costa Rica. You might as well do this against Mexico and the U.S. You probably would have had a better result. It's just, it's inexcusable. And honestly, if I was a Japanese fan and I flew to this goddamn game, can you imagine? You fly to the Middle East, spend thousands of dollars on this game. You're walking in, you got your ticket out, and then the lineup gets announced. And you look down at your phone and you're like, what the fuck? Ueda starting? Soma starting? Yeah. Like, what? where are our best players? Why are they on the bench? No Tomiyasu again? It's just... Wow. Wow. Yeah, like, you know, as a fan from afar, I'm speechless. I'm literally... It's, uh... It's a tragedy. It's funny. They have the tragedy of Doha in Japanese soccer history where they lose to Iraq on the last – or they tie Iraq on the last uh, qualification day and end up not going to the World Cup, which would have been their first World Cup. I think this might be the new one. This might be the new tragedy of Doha. It's certainly the second chapter. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they had all the momentum to secure their spot going through to the round of 16. Like 95% there. Yes. And they fucking blew it. What do you think happens if they lose to Spain and don't go through? They lose to Spain. Um, Let's just say they don't even go through. What happens if they don't go through? Moriyasu would be out. I think that would be a huge huge setback 
in not only the perception of Japan from other countries, but for football in Japan as a whole, because these guys are like, even if we try, you know, we're not going to make it out. We're not going to get to the, to the knockout stages. So I think it's going to, it's kind of, kind of filter through this generation once again, where they feel like, you know, they can never really make it out in their, you know, their, uh, they're always going to be bottlers. Yeah, I think that's fair. And to do it with this Japanese generation is, is it's depressing to think that given the talent on this team, they start the World Cup with three points beating Germany, a team that a lot of people have potentially winning the World Cup. And then you go and you complete. And that's the thing with me, dude. It's the disrespect It's the disrespect to the opponent. It's the disrespect to the fans. It's the disrespect to people watching from home. And honestly, it's a disrespect to the players who played their asses off in that Germany game to get that result. And then you go and stab everybody in the back by trying to be some smart ass, by trying to be some, oh, well, let's just get a 1-0 win against this horrible Costa Rica team and then Mm. I'll play the big boys again against Spain and you know we'll battle it out there's a reason nobody plays the B team in the second game Moriyasu you do that in the last game and even then I can't stand when teams do it because that seeding matters you want to win the group I don't want my team to play a B team in the third match and then we end up finishing second we got to play France in the round of 16 like there's a reason where you where you finish in the group matters. And Japan legitimately could have finished this group at nine points after that Germany game. They could it was have. looking like they could I have mean, done nine points. They were riding high. Yeah, they'd be lucky to get four now. I think I think you got a point. They do play up. So hopefully they do get something against Spain. I mean the Spain Germany game is in like three hours here. So I guess we'll yeah, see what happens with that. And it's a uh, it's a must win for Germany. Yeah. So I guess they want Spain to win. If my prediction of Japan getting second needs to stay alive, then Spain would need to win. And Germany would need to crash out right now. Wow. I, well, I guess Germany could technically beat Costa Rica. There'd be three teams of three going into the last <laughs> the last round of group stage games with in Spain with six. How is that possible? Wouldn't it be Spain has three, Japan has three, Costa Rica has three, Germany has three, if Germany wins today? If Germany wins today, it would all be three. But if Spain wins today, it'd be Spain would go through Spain would have six. Germany would have zero. I think they would be out. But on that, on the last game, it, it, because Germany plays Costa Rica, I think that they should be able to win that. So let's just say that that's three points to Germany. Costa Rica ends with three points. Japan has to tie Spain to get four. Yeah. So I guess everybody's a Spanish fan right now. Which goes against my DNA. Yeah. Not so much mine, but that's not a position you want to be in. I mean, maybe I would like to see some chaos in Group E and have a Germany win and everyone's on three points. That'd be insane. That last match, Spain-Germany is going to be... I mean, Spain-Japan is going to be hopefully pretty crazy. Um, And we're going to see the... If everybody's got three points, I mean, we're going to see Spain going for it against a Japan who are going for it. And that could be quite interesting to watch. I, I, I mean, I think it'll be a great game. I've always thought that it would be a good game because I've always, uh, you know, as we've talked about the past couple of weeks, I think the Spanish don't rate the Japanese very highly. And I think they're going to go out there. And just kind of do the tiki taka 
you know, keep possession of the ball. And I think Japan's going to get a quick counter and the Spanish are going to be like, oh, I didn't know these guys could do it like that. Yeah. And that back line, it, it's it's susceptible. The Spanish back line and Unai Simon and goal, I'm not totally convinced. Yeah, if De Gea was there, then I'd be a little more nervous. But uh... So what do we do if uh, Soma starts against Spain as well? <laughs> I think I take the Twitter and I call up the uh, Japanese, the Japanese hooligans, or uh, maybe the yakuza. There's probably a couple football fans in the yakuza, and uh, oh yeah, just have them just have them post up outside of Moriyasu's apartment in Tokyo. Just wait for him to get back on the flight home. Just leave it at that. I think. Um... I don't think we'll need to call the the Yakuza. I think there will already be people outside of Moriyasu's estate. I hope those, I hope that man's got uh, some security at the airport because if they lose to Spain now and they crash out, Jesus Christ, you're right. I mean, this is going to be Doha part two. Maybe next time they'll complete the trilogy. Next time Qatar hosts the World Cup in 2030. Um, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. I'm literally, I'm literally seething. Oh, damn, Canada just scored against Croatia. I just saw that. Holy Alfonso shit. Davies in the second minute. Yep. So you want to wrap right, it up there? All right, we're going to call it so there. We yeah, we're going to wrap yeah. it there. All right, you guys let us know your thoughts on the game down below in the comments. I mean, congrats to Costa Rica. Big win. Japan, I don't think I've ever said this before, but y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. Um, just tragic, tragic performance. Horrendous Take a good approach. look in the mirror. Good look in the mirror and be fully – mentally prepared for the spain game please yeah please and hopefully the spanish win i think we'll need to crunch the numbers again but i think if you guys enjoyed leave a like on the video and hit subscribe if you want to see more world cup content we'll see you on the next one